So we've all heard the term resiliency. As a psychiatrist, I hear this term quite a bit in training after training. We want to build a resilient workforce, resilient individuals and resilient communities. But have we ever stopped to question what resiliency actually means anyway? Let's start by exploring the root of the word. Exploring root words often gives us tremendous insights into deeper meanings. In the case of resiliency, the Latin root is resiliere, re meaning back, plus salire, meaning to jump or leap. So in other words, to jump back, to rebound, or recoil. The textbook definition of resiliency is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, toughness, or the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape, elasticity. So as amazing as this concept sounds, there are a few problems that pop up when we examine this idea a bit more closely. What it's actually saying is that resiliency assumes the ability to return to the original state. In other words, the ability to maintain the status quo. So in spite of the adversity that's going around you, it's your responsibility to keep returning to your original state. It doesn't stop to ask, what is it about the prevailing circumstances that makes it necessary to be consistently and continually resilient? Of course, we need to be resilient when exposed to a stress or multiple stressors, but if the predominant theme of your life is stressor after stressor after stressor, maybe it's the circumstance that's unnatural. And maybe it's the unnatural circumstances that need to be altered rather than the individual. A concrete example. Let's say you happen to work for an organization that's going through a bit of a financial crisis. This organization makes the tough decision to lay off non-essential employees and implement mandatory overtime for those employees who still remain employed. Needless to say, those remaining employees are exhausted and sleep deprived, and even though the numbers have turned around revenue-wise, morale is low and the remaining employees eventually start to show signs of burnout. Now, this is a problem because disengaged employees really aren't good for the bottom line. Human Resources has the brilliant idea to implement an organization-wide wellness program to teach the employees self-care and stress management. No mention is given to the fact that the majority of the stress that they're needing to manage is probably the direct result of being sleep deprived, overworked, and terrified that they could be let go at any moment. No, employee, the reason that you feel so miserable is because you just need to learn how to take better care of yourself. You need to learn how to manage stress and be more resilient. Notice this approach doesn't look at the ways in which the organization itself and the organizational culture contribute to an excessive and unnatural amount of stress. The onus to change lies solely with the individual because the individual, not the organization, is assumed to be defective and in need of change. So when we settle for resiliency, we're saying that we're okay with accepting our circumstances exactly as they are. We're okay with twisting, bending, and contorting to try to mold ourselves to fit into the tiny, stifling container that someone else has dictated we need to fit into. When we settle for resiliency, we assume no authority to alter the conditions of our lives. We resign to keep bending, twisting, and contorting ourselves so that we can somehow manage to persevere through unfair, inhumane, or unnatural circumstances. I want you to think about all of the conditions and circumstances that you've had to persevere through in your life. Now think of all the times when those conditions got to be too much and you've blamed yourself for just not being strong enough to persevere. Rather than asking ourselves, how we can be more resilient in the face of stressful life circumstances, perhaps we should start asking ourselves how we can actively choose to build lives that support our humanity by seeking out systems and circumstances that allow us to thrive rather than seek to destroy us. And if those systems don't exist, what can we do to build our own? 
Angela Davis once said, I am no longer accepting the things that I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. So I ask you, what are the conditions in your life that you can no longer accept? What can you do to actively alter those circumstances or conditions? I'd love to hear about it. Be well and God bless.